This video is supported by Rocket Railways for all your model railway needs. Please check the link in the description below. Right, what we're going to do first of all is to get the brickwork painted. But before we do that, I need to repair some of the join lines on each of the corners. They're not too bad on most cases, but there's one sort of quite glaring one just here that I would like to repair just to help blend in the paint a wee bit more and that big sharp line doesn't stand out. So what I tend to use is just bog standard tile adhesive and just by taking a small amount of it I'm going to work it into the edge of the plastic card there. Now this dries very quickly as well which is ideal then for moving on to the next stage of the project. And once that is on, with a damp sponge, it's just a matter of gently rubbing it away. Exactly the same process as if you were tiling your bathroom. And if you do need to add a little bit more, you, you know, sometimes you can take just a little bit too much of it away. And it... and once that dries and gets painted, it will be even less noticeable, that particular join. And I'll just repeat the process right the way around the box. Now with the little bit of filler all dried it's time to apply the first layer of paint and I'm going to follow the same process that I normally do whenever it comes to painting brickwork. In this instance I am going to be using Humbrol's number 186 which is brown and I'm going to apply it over the entire brickwork and as I go I'm going to dab it off with a bit of kitchen tile in order to bring through some of the orange original plastic card colour th uh, throughout and that's going to already give us two different tonal colours of brickwork. I then, once this is dry, we will follow it up with a, another colour uh, to, in, to essentially create three different tones of brickwork, which hopefully will enhance the overall look of the entire thing. While the paint dries on that signal box on the brickwork, what we'll have a look at is the windows. These, as I've said before, come from Ancorton Models and the code is 00S-D4. 
Now you'll see that I've already primed the windows in grey uh, just with a Halfords primer and then I've painted over them in a Tamiya black matte um, and now it's time to sort of to put them together. Now what I have discovered is that these windows are very very fine and really to use rocket car glue just along the edge it just isn't strong enough. So what we're going to do is take our some acetate now this one here has just come off one of the packaging from one of the wills um, brick packs uh, you know the sheets uh, it's a nice stiff plastic and the windows do bond quite well to it so we'll do two of them which are two of the side ones uh, we, we need two sets of two and two sets of four windows for each uh, to, to, to complete the entire box so I will make up a set of two here for you now to show you what the procedure is. Now on the sprue the windows are only held in position with one little tag and fortunately it is on the top side so it's just a matter of sanding that down to make sure it's nice and smooth. Now once sanded we can go to our sheet of acetate and what I'm going to do is I'll use the ruler here I'm going to set the now it's not going to be that easy to see because obviously it's clear but what I'm going to do is set the ruler about five millimeters just above the edge of the piece of plastic and can use the the cutting mat to help sort of gauge where the position position is and then whenever I'm gluing the first window in I'll glue it in again just approximately th five millimeters maybe even less you know two or three millimeters would actually be enough on both sides and we'll glue that just in that position there and I'm going to be using uh, rockets glue and glaze for this um, this is uh, it's a nice wee glue to work with so it is it's, it's, um, it's quite a, a thick texture to it and you need very very little of it the, the less the better um, as you, you don't get the the overspill coming on to the actual bit of clear plastic you want to try and avoid that as much as possible and there will inevitably be a little bit of um, spillage as you press it down onto the plastic but um, the beauty of this glue is that it does dry completely clear so it's 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 next to invisible whenever it is dry that's clever and start that again and we'll pop that into place like I say just a few millimeters in from the edge And we'll repeat the process for the other window now like I say we need to do a block with two of these windows and then another sorry two of the two set we need to do a section with two of these windows twice and then repeat the process with four windows in a row and the the point of using the ruler is that it allows you to make sure that you've got a nice straight line with the windows that they're not going all higgledy, higgledy piggledy now we'll glue that second one in and that leave that to dry completely before we move on i'll just recap everything that then went on with the painting first of all it was humbrel 186 brown was applied over the entire brickwork and that was dabbed off with a kitchen tile left to dry then that was followed up with Revel number 37 reddish brown and again the same practice of dabbing off some of the paint with the paper towel. Again left to dry and I've come back in then afterwards using a sponge just dabbing it into the paint and liber or uh, lightly applying it across the brickwork to create different tones and I've used Revel 82 dark earth Revel 85 brown and Revel 75 stone grey just to help create the different textures. Finally 
the grout or mortar wash is applied and that's just a grey acrylic so it's a mix of black and white that I've used. I've also added a very tiny hint of brown and a very tiny hint of yellow ochre into that just to create a nice sort of uh, cement wash. That's painted on completely, wiped off with the kitchen towel and then with a damp kitchen towel, not, not overly damp, just a light uh, wetness to it, wipe off the excess to bring through the brick. Finally, the uh, pl uh, plain plastic card around the window surrounds was finished in a Revel 89 be beige and that will be further highlighted with weathering once the entire structure is complete. So now we're ready to move on to installing the windows and the doors. But first of all, before we do that, this little section of pillar here needs to get its piece finished onto it. And for that, I'm using uh, sandpaper. Now you get sandpaper in this sort of grade, it's, uh, well, it's P80 grade, and it comes in these nice sort of uh, mixed colors, and it works perfectly for that mottled stone, um, uh, stone effect that we're looking for on this. So I have cut out a section to the required size and it's just a case of gluing that into place and um, just before you do do that ensure that you've used the beige on the inside or the edge parts of the pillars uh, so that you don't get any whiteness it may also be necessary to just do the edges of this after the the glue has dried off so I'll just add a wee drop of rocket card glue on to that and we're ready to go moving on the first windows can now be installed so these are the ones that we prepared earlier and they're now all glued and dried onto their clear plastic backing we have two sets of four windows of which the clear plastic is trimmed right to the edge of the frame on the left on one and on the right on the other and then that's repeated on the two sets of two frames. So what we're going to do is just apply some rocket card glue along the three edges of the, um, the clear plastic and we can set those into place. I would suggest also just doing a dry fit of these before you go ahead and apply or glue them properly into place as it may be required certainly on the outside edge just to sand it back a wee bit very hard to just cut that clear plastic right to the edge of the frame so it may require a little bit of sanding so I've done that checked it all off and it's all good to go so I'm ready to glue into place with the windows now in place we just need to add two pillars one at each end on the corner of these two windows one it hides the unsightly gap here between uh, the front and the side windows but also we need to create that support post for the upper end of the building so for that we're going to use one millimeter square styrene rod and this is from evergreen but you'll also get it from plastruct as well essentially you just need to cut a length the same height as the window and then with a dab of rocket card glue you can get it put into place now i'm going to do this off camera because i really need to get in close just to make, make sure that it's sitting true and square but hopefully you get the idea just from that demonstration with those in obviously they will need to get painted black the same as the windows and at this time it probably wouldn't be a bad idea just to run a little bit of black where they each of the windows join as you can whenever you're up close just see a slight gap between each of the windows the laser cutting these are pretty good but it still leaves a little sort of rough line in between so just a wee strip of paint up each bar and then obviously on the end pillars as well Moving on and we'll look at the windows next. First we'll look at the little bathroom window. Um, we're going to take a little bit of Tamiya masking tape. And we'll just apply it to the back of the wall. 
and this will mean then whenever we add our frames into place they're not going to fall through it just gives it something to catch on to now for this one here we're going to use the 0.8 millimeter square rod again from Plastruct or from evergreen and what we need to do first is to cut two lengths to go across the bottom of the windows and the top of the window and then we'll do another one for the uh, the vertical uh, parts of the frame too and once happy with the fit again it's just a little bit of rocket card glue and we'll pop that one into place and this is a really tight fit in my case here but that's all the better because it's not going to pop out anytime soon And then we just repeat that process right the way around the window. With that frame in place, you can now very carefully peel the masking tape away from the rear. We've got ourselves a nice little window frame. Uh, just add another bit of clear plastic across the back of that and that completes that window. You have another window to do here at the back. Now, there are two options for this. Essentially, you can have what this window has is a sliding shutter and it can either be in the closed position or slid across and into the open position. Obviously, if it's in the open position, we do need to add window frames to this one here and that will work in exactly the same way as the little bathroom window up there. Now, I'm going for the closed option and what I have already done is create a little um, sliding shutter essentially uh, you have a piece of plain plastic card and that is cut just one millimeter wider than the whole opening of the window there is then a strip top and bottom of one millimeter square plastic card and that has been cut to a length that is just twice the size of this square plus an extra sort of millimeter and a half each end just to allow for that open or closed position so for example if it was in the open position whenever it's glued into place you'll glue it as so and obviously your window frames will be in there too but in my case here we will be gluing it into the closed position like this but, but before I do glue it on I'm going to prime it in grey primer and give it a lick of paint so finally in this stage we want to look at the doors we have four in total to do one on this end here, two in the little corridor and our main door up into the signal box. Now I'm going to leave the signal box one for the time being as I want to get the floor fitted into place first. I haven't decided whether this door should remain open or closed. I will check with the client to see which he would prefer, but I'll leave that in it for the time being. What we will concentrate on is doing the two doors down here and the one in the rear. Now, first of all, you have to decide if you're building this structure, whether you want doors to be in the open or the closed position. Personally, I'm going to be going closed for all three of these doors. So I need to block up this portal here first. And for that, we're just going to use an off cut of card and cut it just to slightly wider than the opening. And we'll glue that into place behind the wall just using some rocket card glue. And while that glue is going off, we will measure the opening of this doorway. And using a piece of plain plastic card, we're going to cut out a strip that is the size of that door. And that will act as our actual door. So we're looking at 12 millimetres in the case of this portal here by 27. Now once cut, just check that it fits perfectly into place. And if it does need any trimming, now's the time to do it. You want it to sit nice and flush against that bit of card that we've already cut at the back. That one there's working not too bad. I may just trim a little bit off one side, just to give it a little bit more play. And 
Okay, that's good. Right, now we're going back to our 0.8 millimeter square rod and we want to place a strip across the top. And what I'm going to do for that is put it up against my metal ruler and then I can lay the strip onto that. And with a little bit of plastic weld, we can run our, or we can glue our piece in together. Now I'm, now I'm purposely leaving a little bit of an overhang there because we will trim that off afterwards. We'll take two more strips and we'll repeat the process on the upright parts of the, the door. Okay, those are on now and then we just need to trim off our excess. And then we'll just do a final test fit to make sure everything goes in, that we don't need to sand anything back. just need to trim off the bottom of the door there but essentially that's now done again I'm going to prime this in grey and give it a lick of paint before I glue it into place and I'm going to repeat the process for this door here I also need to put a piece of card across the back of the corridor section and then I can glue a door in at the front there okay that's the final piece in for now. So I have the end door on this side, the rear window. I'm not going to see those too well, but the two doors are on the internal corridor. The windows are done and the main signal box windows are also in place. And the little support bars in the corners have all been painted. I think that's pretty much a good week's work. Okay, we're gonna leave it there for now. I will be back in a fortnight's time and I think the next job to tackle is the interior. So until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll chat again soon. Bye for now.